White supremacist terror. Those are words the president has yet to use to describe the attack in El Paso over the weekend that killed 20 people. An Anglo man, as the sheriff in El Paso said, who drove 10 hours to kill Hispanics. The president has used the words neither white supremacist nor terror. What is the impact? Joining me now is Jonathan Greenblatt. He is the CEO of the Anti-Defamation League. And Jonathan, it's very nice to have you on this morning. As I was saying, as you're walking on someday, we'll get to talk in a different situation where it isn't quite so painful. What do you think the president has to say this morning? Do you think he needs to call this attack white supremacist terror? Yes, I think there are a few things, John, that we need to think about today. First and foremost, our hearts ache for the victims in El Paso, as well as those in Dayton. So we need to keep those people centered in front of our minds. I think secondly, as we talk about the president, keep in mind that today is the anniversary of the 2012 attack in Oak Creek, Wisconsin, mm -hmm. where a man, a white supremacist, burst into a Sikh temple and murdered six worshipers, right? So white nationalism, violent, this brand of violent extremism, it existed before President Trump, and yet words have consequences. And so it's not even what he says today at 10 o'clock, although there's something he needs to say, that white supremacy is a global terror threat, but it's what he says afterwards. It's does he reinforce the message in an authentic way, because for far too long, the language that he's used, invaders, mm -hmm. describing people as rapists and murderers, talking about open borders, these are literally staples of white supremacist rhetoric. And the idea that they're coming from our commander in chief is shocking. I remember back after Charlottesville, David Duke sent out a message thanking President Trump for the language he uh, chose to use and chose not to use. Right. So my question this morning is, it's been two days right. since this white supremacist terror attack yep. uh, in, in, in Texas. If you're a white nationalist, what do you read from the president's reticence to use right. those words? Well, we know at ADL, because we've been tracking hate for a long time, that extremists feel emboldened in this moment because literally, as you said, the president's silence actually speaks volumes. So it's what he said and how he sort of vacillated after Charlottesville. It's when after Christchurch, when questioned about white supremacy, he said he didn't think it was really a problem. And we've seen this pattern repeat itself. Last week, after the, the killings in Gilroy, right, which another person motivated by white supremacist ideology, uh, one of the most prominent extremists, he wrote on his website, this is the white nationalism we elected the president for. He said that after Gilroy and after the president's comments about the four congresswomen. So the president, by not saying something, is sending a message. He can clear that up today, but again, today is just the beginning. Unfortunately, I think it's a little bit too late because the messages he's been sending for the last few years are the reason why these people feel so emboldened. So eight chan which is something that you've written about extensively, spoken right. about extensively, right. which is this website that has served as the host for so many of these hateful, terroristic thoughts. Cloudflare, which is the security apparatus that yep. was hosting the site, they, they stopped working yep. for HN this morning. So at least for now, you can't get on. Is that enough? Well, it's a start. So let's keep in mind what HN is. I would sort of, we often use services like Facebook and Twitter and YouTube, right? 8chan is sort of the septic tank of the internet. It's a cesspool for some of the worst elements in our society to talk about things like child pornography and violent extremism and the ideology around it. But there's a whole value chain that makes services like 8chan work. So Cloudflare's done something really important because by refusing to provide online security, the service is actually down this morning. And there's other things that could be done. The, the banks and the financial institutions, which allow dollars to flow into these services, they should shut them down. The hosting companies that put them up online should shut them down. You know, at the ADL, we really see that the face, that the, sorry, the front line in fighting hate is really the internet. All of us can take steps to stop it. I know at the ADL, I'll have to tell you, the hate existed before the internet. Mm -hmm. Hate will exist after the internet, but you don't have to make it easier. That's exactly correct. Yeah, there has always been intolerance. That isn't new. What's new is that it's just a few clicks away, and that's something we can prevent. All right, Jonathan Greenblatt, thank you for coming in this morning, helping us understand the impact of words. Unfortunately, uh, again, as you said to me as you were coming in, this wasn't unpredictable. No. Not at all. And in fact, in its predictability is what's the problem, why I hope the president today and other leaders across the spectrum speak out. All right, Jonathan, thank you very much. Thank you.